Hey everybody, this is Dave here at Pulp Alley, and today we are talking about how to play the Pulp Alley tabletop adventure game. Specifically, we're going to be taking a look at the end of turn sequence. So, at the end of each turn, after all of the characters in play have activated, uh, then you proceed to the end of turn sequence. Let's take a look at it here. It's on page 74 in the second edition Pulp Alley Core rulebook. So one of the first things that you do is roll health checks. So any injured character can roll a health check. It really doesn't matter when that injury occurred. If you uh, were injured on turn one and you didn't recover at the end of that turn or at the end of turn two, well, you could still recover at the end of turn three. You still have that opportunity. It may just be an injury that kind of lingered around for a while, and that's cool. That makes sense. So one of the first things you do, every single injured character in play gets to roll a recovery check, and that's always done on a D6. All you got to do is roll a four or better and you shake off one of your injuries. So if you had a character that had multiple injuries, like let's say a, a leader or something like that, then passing your recovery check allows you to move up one step in the health. So uh, our duck here, uh, Kwanu, is uh, currently at a D6 health because he's sporting an injury there. So at the end of the turn, he'd get to roll a dice. And if he rolled a four or better... In this case, he rolled a five and he shakes off that injury. So Kwanu is no longer injured. If a character is down, so we have a down brew over here. You see that? We have a brew that's down over there and definitely injured. So at the end of the turn, all injured characters get to roll. So he's going to get to roll. And if he gets a four or better, and he did. So that means he would climb back to his feet. So a, a, if a character is down and they pass their recovery, they go back to a D6 health. It doesn't mean that they automatically re, you know, heal to full or anything like that. So like Kawano here, if he was injured and he, he was down and he passed a health check, well, he would come back to his feet, but he would still be below full health because that would just put him at a D6 health. At the next turn, he would still get another recovery and could, could eventually get back to D8 health. So that's kind of cool, you know? Uh, your characters can bounce back after they get injured. They can bounce back. That's, that's uh, pretty handy in an adventure game. And you see that in adventure movies and novels and stuff like that and professional wrestling. <laughs> So if a character is down and they fail their, their recovery check, then they are removed from play. And that is how a character gets removed from play. If once again, if a character is down and you fail to recover, then that character is removed from play. All right, another thing that you could do during the end of the turn is roll a recovery check for horror effects. So let's say uh, Kwanu is uh, affected by uh, some sort of evil spirit here, and he has picked up two different horror cards as a result. So in addition to getting to roll for his uh, recovery check to shake off his injury, he also gets to try and recover from any horror effects that are on him. Now you only roll one dice, and if you succeed, in this case he did not succeed, and that means both of these effects remain in play. If he passed his horror check, then he could choose one of these to remove from the character card. So the player could actually look at it and go, you know what, that one doesn't really hurt me that much. This one, oh, I don't want that one on me. So they can choose which one they get rid of. Now, if there's anything that occurs at the end of the turn, it happens after recovery checks. So that's explained right there on page 74 as well. So uh, after you roll for your recovery checks, any end of turn effects would occur. So end of turn effects are frequently related to scenarios. Uh, sub abilities could also have end of turn effects. So that's when that sort of stuff would would 
uh, kick in. And once all of those are resolved, that ends the turn and you proceed to the next turn or the scenario ends depending on what turn you're on. If you have any questions about Pulp Alley, if you have any questions about the rules we went over here, be sure to leave a comment down below. While you're at it, make sure you get subscribed to our little channel. Hit the like button and hit the share so you get a notification when we upload a new video. And we will see you soon. Bye, everybody.